Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. We're going to talk about DC's Vertigo imprint. RIP, it's over, it's done. DC is shutting down Vertigo. We talked about the rumors, I think it was last week, that they were going to do this, and they're totally doing it. They're pulling the plug on Vertigo, um, which is sad. It's, it's actually very sad, given the given the uh, the history, the pedigree that Vertigo Comics had. Uh, I know I was really in the Vertigo back in the 90s when I was uh, heavy into collecting monthly comics. And uh, it is sad to see what it's become, and it's sad to see that uh, that brand retired. Um, but not to be unexpected, given given the, uh, the current state of the comic book industry, right? Just Vertigo's not really been knocking it out of the park lately. There's been a lot of controversy attached to some of the titles, and it's really kind of kind of unnecessary because all of DC is basically Vertigo right now or what Vertigo was uh, back in the day. So before I get into this video, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed already. Um, Geeky Sparkles will be back. She was taking a little bit of time off. She had some other stuff she had to do and she's not really in the Vertigo. So she didn't really care to be in this video. Um, but please subscribe, help us grow the channel. You guys have been awesome. The channel has been growing at a phenomenal rate over the last month or two, and uh, we really, really, really appreciate it. And we want to keep bringing you content. So this is coming from Gizmodo slash io9, which is probably going to get canceled at some point here in the near future themselves. Uh, DC Comics just killed its Vertigo imprint after 26 years and several reshuffles and reboots later, including one just last year. DC has announced that its legendary adult-focused imprint Vertigo has been shuttered as part of a rebranding and restructuring of its imprint divisions. DC has confirmed that as of January 2020, Vertigo, renamed in part for last year's shakeup at DC Vertigo, will wrap up operations as will the DC Zoom and DC Inc. YA brands. Its current books, including the line of Sandman Universe, will either finish up or transition over to the newly updated version of DC's current black label line. Does that mean more, um, does that mean more bat dicks? Are we going to have Sandman's uh, penis in, in that book? I don't know. Replacing Vertigo, Zoom, and Ink will be three new age branded labels for all of DC Comics content, DC Kids, for readers age 8 to 12, DC, which is the main line for 13 and above, and finally DC Black Label for readers 17 and above. So PG, PG 13, R. Got it. <laughs> Hollywood Reporter notes that while this is the end for DC's permanent imprints, Pop-up limited time ones like Gerard Way's Young Animal or Warren Ellis's The Wild Storm imprint will still continue to exist. Is that what they're calling it? A pop-up? A pop-up imprint? So we're going to just test the water. We're going to get some uh, Hollywood person come in. We're going to do, we're not, not just create a mini series uh, just for this Hollywood person uh, like we did with J.J. Uh, Abrams and his son, but we'll just create an entire brand uh, to separate it out from the main line. So they can't do any damage over in the main DC universe uh, we'll just quarantine them to their own little corner um of, of the publishing operation right in a statement acknowledging the closure dc editor-in-chief dan didio stated that while vertigo as an institute would be no more the spirit the imprint had championed in its books since the very beginning would remain in books launched elsewhere at dc i actually would agree with this i think uh, you know mainline dc has sort of become vertigo in its own way when everybody's vertigo nobody's vertigo. So we're returning to a singular presentation of the DC brand that was present throughout most of our history until 93 when we launched Vertigo to provide an outlet for edgier material. That kind of material is now mainstream across all genres. Uh, so we thought it was the right time to bring greater clarity to the DC brand and reinforce our commitment to storytelling for all of our fans in every age group. The new system will replace the age ratings we currently use on our material. Um, another thought, it's also a good way to separate yourself from uh, scandal <laughs> attached to the line. Uh, Border Town had a lot of scandal because of the writer, um, and they canceled that. And there's been some uh, negative buzz about Goddess Mode because of Zoe Quinn being involved and a lot of drama surrounding that. So this is actually a very good time for DC to say, hey, you know what? Um, these titles either uh, aren't performing or they're causing us uh, uh, grief in the PR department, uh, probably a combination of the two. So now is a good time to just pull the plug completely on Vertigo and uh, consolidate, right? 
So Vertigo was launched in 93 by Karen Berger, who helmed it as executive editor and senior vice president for the next two decades before stepping down in March of 2013 to be replaced by longtime editor Shelley Bond, who herself was restructured out of DC in 2016. Seems to be a pattern here. It was established as a way for DC Comics creatives to tell stories unrestrained by the Comics Code Authority, which, you know, seems to be coming back, right? Because now uh, the comic book industry wants to censor uh, certain kinds of comics and you have to run your projects and your life through uh, a gauntlet of, of uh, purity tests if you want to get your comics to stand now. So I think the Comics Code Authority absolutely lives on in spirit in the comic book industry, which is part of the problem. Highlighting stories that could tell adult-focused tales featuring explicit content, Vertigo quickly established itself as an interesting imprint where creators like Neil Gaiman, Brian K. Vaughn, Warren Ellis, Grant Morrison, and many more, who all crucially would retain ownership rights over the Vertigo title, something recent incarnations of the imprint moved away from, could experiment without many of the limitations they would have faced working within the confines of the main DC Comics line. Across the 90s and the 2000s, Vertigo became home to comic icons like Fables, Transmetropolitan, which I, I loved, uh, Sandman, which I loved, Preacher, Why the Last Man, and many more, several of which have gone on to find further success in adaptations, including uh, Zombie, Lucifer, Constantine, the upcoming adaptation of The Kitchen. Vertigo's end is a sad moment for DC and the comics industry at large. Uh, yeah, it is. You know, I wonder if this has anything to do with, uh, they, they show down here, Swamp Thing, and I wonder if this has anything to do with Swamp Thing's uh, early cancellation. They're, they're canceling Swamp Thing before it even got started. So, uh, yeah, you know, there are some different takes on this all over the internet. Uh, Bounding in the Comics has a take on it with some reactions from people who had either worked on Vertigo books or, or were uh, fans of Vertigo books. Jim Lee um, tries to put a positive spin on this. Uh, Scott Snyder says he can express how proud he is to have been a tiny part of Vertigo and uh, his creator-owned work like American Vampire will continue under Black Label. So it sounds like Black Label really is uh, sort of the new Vertigo. You know, some praise for Shelley Bond, uh, goodbye at Vertigo Comics. Um, you know, praise for, for Karen Berger. Those early Vertigos are like orange, <laughs> orange spine penguins, timeless, perfectly bound books. Yeah, the early Vertigo stuff was very, very good. Uh, a lot of pros lamenting the end of, of Vertigo. But, I mean, this is to be expected. Again, we're, we're you know, talking about a lot of the controversy associated with Vertigo since the relaunch. And it has been. I mean, you know, and granted, when Vertigo launched in 93, we didn't have, you know, wide access to the Internet like we do now. Uh, so we, we didn't, uh, you know, know what these creatives were thinking. We weren't communicating with a lot of these people daily. Uh, they weren't out there tweeting, obviously. But yeah, just, you know, here's a rundown of some of the, the drama surrounding Vertigo creators since it started uh, following the relaunch. Um, here's uh, some of, of what happened. Robbie Rodriguez tweeted unsolicited pictures of his extremities to former DC Comics artist uh, Ethan Van Skyver. That is true. He sent Ethan a, a picture of his, his butthole, if I remember correctly. Uh, Zoe Quinn uh called republicans evil and she also got into uh some controversy here that that uh the verge reporter didn't disclose her personal relationship with her um you know we have espouse anti-white racism we've got robbie sheridan attacking you know basically they're out there out there you know attacking conservatives which is very in vogue it's very in vogue and you know people are entitled to their political opinions right they can they can uh you know espouse whatever political opinions they want to but you know when you're trying to sell uh comics to everybody you know sometimes you want to rein it in a little bit and and keep uh you know keep your opinions to yourself um however comics is is predominantly made up of of left-wing creators uh just you know we've got people kind of on the the spectrum here of like like a just a run-of-the-mill democrat to like far far left extremists um who are using platforms to uh you know say some really uh questionable things in public um yeah and of course we had eric esquivel he was accused of, of misconduct and border ca border town was canceled even polygon uh, called him out for that so you know i think part of it is part of it is that vertigo you know, it really, it doesn't really serve a purpose now uh, because, you know, like I said, if everybody's vertigo, if every book is vertigo, then then no one is. And the black label would, would obviously be the R-rated, you know, R-rated uh, DC stuff. 
Um, and also just the brand has been, it's been tarnished over the last year or so with all the drama and, and frankly, you know, some pretty subpar products. So it doesn't really serve a purpose anymore. You know, without the original uh, editorial uh, behind it, it doesn't serve a purpose and it's probably is, it probably is time to move on. Plus, you know, DC is restructuring because the comic book industry, the mainstream comic book industry isn't in a terribly good place right now. They can't have umpteen million brands. Uh, meanwhile, Marvel is hiring J.J. Abrams and his kid to uh, develop a new Spider-Man series. <laughs> so who knows? That's going to save comics, right? Uh, but uh, they had a good run. They had a good run. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, rants, uh, gaming videos, art videos, and more. Geeky will be back. I promise. Uh, she's just been very busy the last couple days, and uh, she'll talk about things she actually wants to talk about. Vertigo does not interest her. So uh, we'll see you guys later. Hey guys, thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.